In this lesson, we'll continue working on Merle Travis's Cannonball Rag by having a look at the second section. The first video is linked up if you don't have that down yet. But this section has got some pretty fancy finger picking that will twist your fingers, but in a good way, right? Let's get into it. One, two. I hope you like these detailed song tutorials brought to you by Black Mountain Picks. If you're a flat picker and you're looking to get into thumb picking, I really can't think of a better way for you to get started. This pick has a familiar flat pick design. It helps cut down on that awkward break-in phase of using a thumb pick. Now I'm using a heavy gauge, but Cole and the team have just come out with a medium gauge pick if you're into that. Check them out at the link in the description. Now let's get going with the second section of Cannonball Rag. We're gonna get started with what really looks like a D7. If you would fret your D7 this way, like think about basic C7, just move it up a step into D. But what we're going to do, of course, there's a trick, there's a curveball here. We're going to put the ring finger on the A note here on the sixth string bass. And we're not going to play the um, the D in the bass. We're just going to play six, four, six, four. So good news is we're not moving around with the bass line here. We're just going to play, although you could, and that will sound cool, but we're just going to play this fifth fret, sixth string bass, along with this fourth fret, fourth string bass, okay? But I want you to see where it comes from. There's a D7 there. We're just putting it over A, all right? So the picking here is really cool, and it's probably going to be a little challenging for you. Um, to move this index finger up from the D to that D sharp. All right, it, it, to me, this is the magic of this section where we've got the D. All right, that's what's happening with the melody, but of course, like most things, finger picking, the, the difficulty is putting that together with the bass. The first couple of measures really Uh, we're just playing right on top of the beat. But that is tricky for sure to sneak that finger up kind of behind all of this mess that we've got going here. And we do play the D on our way to the bass at the end of the second measure here. Right there. All right, and then we basically do that same thing, but we move to a G chord. Now you can move this into, um, this would be difficult. So we're gonna move this into a thumb based G chord here with the thumb taking care of the sixth string third fret bass. And then we're basically gonna do the same thing. All right, with one difference, and that happens on the uh, the top on the melody here. We're going to do that, but for our last beat, we're going to pick up and play that open second string there. All right, and then we're going to a, a completely different different part here. We're going to go into our G nine. All right, and this to me was very tricky after this D. And right here, we change to a G9 chord. So what we're gonna do, remember when we say G9, not G add nine, that G9 implies that we've got a dominant seventh. So we're gonna find that flat seven of G which is F here on the fourth string, third fret. Then we need the ninth, which is one above the octave, so one above G, G, A. So here's our A on the second fret of the third string. And the picking here is really cool. I love that we go to this G9. And what we're gonna do is pluck really on the beat here. So our bass is gonna go six, four, six, four. 
and feel free to push through and catch four and three there like that so we've got bass with the a and then bass then the open b then back to the bass before we answer it with this pretty tricky yet very cool measure notice there's a little pickup where we play some open strings at the end of that i really want to point these point these these parts out where we kind of give ourselves a break and you can use that time especially when you're playing this very quickly but build the good habits now at a slow tempo when you're learning it to move your hand to the next thing all right and that's coming but let's take a closer look at that second measure over a G so we've got our G9 fretted we're going to pinch six and one and then pull off on our way so that's one and one and two on our way to the bass keep in mind still six four six four with the open second string and of two back to the G so that's a really cool move right there I absolutely love it bass open second open four or six and four sorry four and three uh, there it's a lot to keep straight here folks and you're gonna feel that way too when you're working through this so once again I'll play these two measures for us all right and now we're gonna get into C major here but we're gonna add another bass note that G so we've got a C over G if you ever see a little slash chord that's what they're called we've got a C chord sure right but we've got it over this G note here in the bass so we've got C over G what we're gonna do is really start a very cool uh, run here so that's pinching the sixth string and the C on top and here is a great place to push through and play the two bass notes six and five all right so that's one and two that two is the bass on the fourth string then what we're gonna do is and this is the way I play this I'm gonna use my thumb here you could use the big bar chords but um, this worked for me especially when you get this really fast drop this down like you're going to an F chord right that's that's a familiar move we're moving all three of these fingers up a string set and then coming up a fret and adding the bass with the thumb again you could do it like this but at this pace I found for me personally this was the way to do it all right so same picking just a different chord and then we do the same thing again just moving it up from F sharp to G so we've got all right, and there's something tricky here at the end remember how when we got to G and we did that thing we would always slide up to get into E7 we're gonna do that again here and it involves um, definitely uh, some tricky moves so I'm sliding with my little finger because that's under the G major chord at the fifth fur fifth fret all right and when I get there I'm going back to the bass notice I'm not really holding a chord yet I'm just trying to make that slide happen then I'm gonna move my fingers so everything's kind of in the air for a second and I'm going this from our E7 chord just think about it you don't really need all the fingers but you need these two notes that's the D here on the third string of uh, seventh fret and then sixth fret on the fourth string right out of that E7 so we're thinking E7 and we're sliding in really tricky move there, there's no two ways about it so let's just kind of hone in on that and let's step through it slowly leading up to it we've got and now from that E7 we're headed to an A7 
I'm gonna pluck, I'm using my thumb here in the bass. You could use the open fifth string if that works for you. What I'm gonna do is pluck um, these two together, six and three, all right, for that C sharp there. And then this is kind of a six, four bass move. So I'm gonna punch these tones and really if I move through and catch that second string, that's cool too. But we're gonna split this measure. We've got A7 for beat one, two, and then we're going to play beat two is, or sorry, beat three here on the bass. And you could play the D bass here, right? In this D9 chord. But try to try to catch both of them if you can. This is advanced for sure. But we get we get some of that you know double bass, those two low notes in the bass, um, just by the way I'm doing it is kind of fretting both of these strings at the same time with my middle finger here. So we've got three and four. If you can't do it, or if you want to save that for later, I recommend using that D or the A and focusing on just one of those notes for your bass and that being three and four as you punch that and we're going to wrap up from here to our friend the G chord. All right and this connects to another section of the tune which we're not going to go into here. So for purposes of just wrapping up Pluck these two outer strings under the G bar chord. Bass, which you can push through, strings four, three, and maybe two. And then on the end of two, catch that G first string. All right, there's a lot to chew on in these few measures. There's no doubt about it, but it's, it's a great section of this tune. Well, I love this part and how it moves through the chords. And then of course we've got the glue with that sort of G9 move with that cool pinky move on top. And then this amazing chord climb here to round us out back to G. These eight or 12 bars in this case are absolutely phenomenal. Take your time with them, but let's hear them played slowly so that you can know where you're going. One, two, three, four. Now, let's hear this thing up to speed once more. What a song, right? I mean, listen, I'm playing this at a snail's pace compared to Merle Travis. This tune is definitely a challenge, but do a little block and tackle here by learning this slowly and then letting the speed be a separate challenge. There's quite enough fretboard finesse required to pull this thing off without trying to do it at warp speed. Hey, by the way, would you be interested in a video of me showing my specific practice methods to get this thing up to speed far beyond what you've seen and heard in this video? If so, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for our sponsor, Black Mountain Picks, for making these lessons possible. Check them out at the link in the description. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Until then, practice smart and play on.